Umalusi, the Council for Quality Assurance in General and Further Education and Training, is constituted by an Act of Parliament. The General and Further Education and Training Quality Assurance Act No. 58 of 2001, as amended in 2008. The role of Umalusi in education and training in South Africa is to set and monitor standards in general and further education and training in the country in accordance with the National Qualifications Framework Act No. 67 of 2008 as amended and the General and Further Education and Training Quality Assurance Act No. 58 of 2001. About the name Umalusi, it is derived from the Nguni languages Umalusi, meaning shepherd or herder in the African context. This is the guardian of the family's wealth, livestock. Umalusi takes care of one of our nation's most treasured assets, the standards of general and further education and training. Umalusi accredits private education institutions to offer tuition as well as private assessment bodies to assess qualifications registered on the General and Further Education and Training Qualifications sub-framework. This means that Umalusi accredits the following institutions to offer qualifications registered on the sub-framework. Independent schools, private further education and training colleges or FET colleges, private adult education and training centers, and private assessment bodies that assess the qualifications that Umalusi certifies. Please bear in mind that in accrediting institutions, Umalusi is guided by policy documents that contain criteria for accreditation for each institutional type. These documents are obtainable on the Umalusi website, www.umalusi.org. ZA. It should be noted that Umalusi does not accredit public providers. Instead, Umalusi monitors and reports on the quality of the qualifications and curricula used in public schools, TVET and community colleges, and adult education and training centers, and Umalusi externally monitors the national assessment system. Accreditation is the recognition of the capacity of an independent school, private FET college, private adult education and training center to offer a qualification registered on the general and further education and training qualification sub-framework. The accreditation process is closely linked to and dependent on the process of registration with the state which private education institutions are obliged to comply with. Registration grants a private education institution the license to operate in South Africa. Accreditation, on the other hand, is a status granted to a private education institution at the end of a quality assurance process and attests to the capacity to offer a specific qualification. Private education institutions are accredited to offer and assess specific qualifications on the general and further education and training qualifications framework. Umalusi's main focus in regard to private education institutions is their internal quality management of education provision. The criteria for accreditation of private education institutions to offer a qualification on the general and further education and training qualifications sub-framework are as follows. For independent schools, school ethos, leadership, management and communication, teaching and learning, and school results. For private colleges, mission-directed leadership and management, teaching, learning, and training, learner support, achievement and results. To ensure that prospective educational institutions understand the process, we will explain it by means of a scenario of Fundanati, which is an independent school, and Future Leaders, which is a private college. Both of these institutions want to apply for accreditation. The letter of intent to apply for accreditation is available on Umalusi's website. 
the application has to be completed online. The applicants will receive an electronic invoice for the processing of the letter of intent. They print the invoice as proof of payment. For now, they will wait for Umalusi to verify the payment so that the application can be screened. Umalusi will inform them whether the application is approved or rejected, or whether they need more information. In our scenario, both Fundanati and Future Leaders applications were successful. They are invited to attend a compulsory quality promotion meeting. At this meeting, they will be informed on what is required to complete their self-evaluation report or application. They have their printed invoices to confirm their payment for the attendance of the meeting. The process of completing their self-evaluation report is explained to them. How to complete an application The evidence required Preparation for the site visit Logistical arrangements and the program Please note that individual pre-site visit meetings will not take place. Fees applicable and payment methods. Now that they understand what is expected of them to complete the self-evaluation report, they are granted access to the online self-evaluation instrument as well as access to the application guideline document that clearly explains in detail what is expected, particularly in terms of the evidence required. On submission of the self-evaluation report, they will be invoiced. Please note that all applicants must attend a compulsory quality promotion meeting prior to completing their self-evaluation report. These meetings are meant to ensure that applicants are fully aware of how to complete an application, the evidence required, preparation for the site visit, fees applicable and payment methods. Attendance at these meetings will be per invitation only. Applicants will be informed of the date and venue. Only the applicants who have submitted their online intent to apply for accreditation and whose letter of intent has been accepted will be invited. Applicants will be invoiced for this attendance and may only attend after confirmation of payment for the quality promotion meeting. After attendance of the quality promotion meeting, the applicant will be granted access to the online self-evaluation instrument and will be invoiced for the submission of the self-evaluation report. Applicants will also be granted access to the application guideline document that clearly explains in detail what is expected, particularly in terms of the evidence required. Fundanati and future leaders have paid for their self-evaluation reports and are ensuring that all necessary information and required evidence are attached to their self-evaluation reports, meeting the minimum standards before uploading it on Umalusi's online system. If the required information and evidence is not correct, the report will be returned to them to rework and resubmit with additional costs. Only two resubmissions are permitted. If the submissions are still not satisfactory, the entire submission will be rejected and the applicants will have to go through the whole process again without having access to the documents they have uploaded. Our applicants have made sure that their reports are submitted before the required cutoff date in order to be reported to the registering authorities and assessment bodies as being compliant with Umalusi's processes for the following cycle of assessment. The cutoff dates are as follows. For independent schools offering the National Senior Certificate, 31st August for the November examinations the following year. For private colleges offering the report 190 and 191, NATED N1 to N3 Engineering Studies, 15 April for the August examinations, 15 August for the November examinations. 15 November for the April examinations in the following year. For private colleges offering the National Certificate Vocational, 15 November for the November examinations of the following year. Site Verification Fundanati has been successful in their self-evaluation report and has received an invoice for a site verification visit. 
they have paid their fee and are waiting to hear when the visit will take place. Future Leaders was also successful and Umalusi will advise the Department of Higher Education and Training that they have met the minimum requirements. The Department of Higher Education and Training will now determine whether the college meets the minimum requirements for provisional registration and advise Umalusi if the college is registered both as a private college and an examination center. Fundanati has to conduct an external examination before the accreditation process can continue. They have now received their invoice for the site visit. If Fundanati and future leaders wish to delay the site visit, they will retain the status of unaccredited until they are found compliant with the accreditation criteria. A delay by the institution of more than six months will lead to the lapse of the application. There will be no refund of costs or access to the documentation previously submitted. Fundanati and future leaders have met all requirements for the site visit to go ahead. A consolidated report will be presented to the Accreditation Committee of Council. To ensure that the accreditation process was fair and that the decisions are consistent with the evidence found, they can make one of the following recommendations. For independent schools, full accreditation. And for private colleges, it can either be a seven years accreditation or two years provisional accreditation. The decision can also be that the private college does not meet the requirements, whereby a window period will be given to improve. And lastly, a decision may also be made for no accreditation. Fundanati has received a positive recommendation, but unfortunately, the Accreditation Committee of Council recommended future leaders a window period to improve their initial application. They are notified of the conditions and time period in which the conditions must be met to be granted accreditation. They will also have to pay an additional fee on submission of evidence. They have to ensure that they are ready for an announced site visit at any time. After verification of the new evidence submitted, the report will again be presented to the Accreditation Committee of Council to ensure that the recommendations are consistent with the evidence found. If they do not submit the necessary evidence within the specified time period or the required fee is not paid, they will get a final no accreditation decision. Please note that all the accreditation criteria must be met at the time of review. Therefore, even if a criterion was not specifically stated as a condition, but the standards at the institution drop between the time of the first and follow-up site visits, the institution's level of compliance in each criterion at the point of review will determine the final accreditation outcome. Finally, the Chief Executive Officer has approved the recommendation of the Accreditation Committee of Council, and therefore Fundanati and future leaders have received a letter with the outcome of their applications. They were both successful. Schools or colleges not successful can appeal the outcome of the decision based on evidence available at the time of the application. Umalusi will now monitor both Fundanati and future leaders on a regular basis. Please take note, with regards to payment of invoices, the fees for the accreditation process are available on the Umalusi website. Payment must be made per step of the accreditation process. This means that payment for each step must be made before the next step can take place. No step will be executed before the amount the applicant is invoiced for is settled. This includes any amounts owing to Umalusi, including fees for each services provided, such as certification. Umalusi will not refund any payments made towards an executed step. Should an institution wish to cancel their application, there will be no refund. We therefore appeal to institutions to be sure about their application. Invoices issued for any step of the process must be settled within 90 days. Failure to do so 
will result in the rejection of the application, irrespective of the step at which the applicant is. Applicants must submit the required documentation for any step in the process within 90 days of access to that step. Failure to do so will result in the rejection of the application, irrespective of the step at which the applicant is, with no refund for steps already executed. Applicants whose invoices were not settled and their applications were rejected will be required to reapply for accreditation at full cost to the applicant. There will be no transfer of funds from previous applications that have been rejected. The applicant will have no access to documents already submitted in the case of the rejection of an application. Accredited private education institutions will receive a letter of accreditation and an accreditation certificate which must be prominently displayed at the accredited site. In line with the Department of Basic Education's requirements for registration of schools as examination centers, Umalusi is required to report the accreditation status of schools to the different provincial education departments and the private assessment bodies. The same requirement pertains to private colleges whose accreditation status must be reported to the Registrar of Higher Education and Training. To this end, Umalusi will submit such a report to all the assessment bodies on the status of an institution as at the days indicated under point 3. Namely, for independent schools offering the National Senior Certificate, 31st August for the November examinations the following year. For private colleges offering the report 190 and 191, Nated N1 to N3 Engineering Studies, 15 April for the August examinations, 15 August for the November examinations, 15 November for the April examinations in the following year. And for private colleges offering the National Certificate Vocational, 15 November for the November examinations of the following year. The status reported on will remain as such for the purposes of the Provincial Education Departments, Department of Higher Education and Training, and private assessment bodies for the following examination cycle. Accredited private education institutions will be displayed on Umalusi's website on www.umalusi.org.za. Additional information on this accreditation process can be obtained from the guideline documents found on Umalusi's website and during attendance of the quality promotion meetings. You are also free to contact our officers in this regard. Let's continue this conversation on Facebook and Twitter. Join Umalusi SA on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Umalusi SA. Kindly visit our website on www.umalusi.org.za or give us a call on 012-349-1510. To report any fraud anonymously pertaining to certificates, contact our fraud toll-free hotline on 0800 000 889.